It looked like a stack of books. It was a tsunami, chapter after chapter that histories and experiences broke across the pages. During pandemic lockdown, I chose authors of color. They were clear and compelling, so much so that when travel reopened, I headed south. In Montgomery, Alabama, I stood at a civic fountain. It covers an auction block. When the transatlantic slave trade was abolished, the interstate trade emerged and then flourished. Struggling East Coast planters sold their most valuable assets, human beings, to slave traders who trafficked and resold these people to Southern sugarcane growers. If sugar could be mass produced and become affordable, then this irresistible commodity would change lives. For black men, women, and children, that meant decades more of enslavement that was sanctioned, perpetuated, and routinized. St. Paul may insist, God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but of power, love, and self-control. But I persist. Did no one see the abuse of power? Is tearing children from their mothers at age 10 commonly done? Not the opposite of love. What perversion of self-control does it take to walk by public pens trapping people? Today, Habakkuk is similarly raging. He is fired up and swinging, and we expect a prize fight. But God doesn't enter the ring. God says, write down the vision. What offset command is this to one so distraught? Perhaps the poet's pain, like my frustrations, are a distraction. And I hear James Weldon Johnson's wisdom. Young man, young man, your arm's too short to box with God. Surely the disciples have it right. Theirs is a reasonable request. Increase our faith. Jesus' reply, however, is disproportional and oblique. A seed's worth of faith can uproot a tree and send it swimming? What fantastic imagery is this? What are we supposed to see and believe? 20 years ago, Tom Kiefer worked as a janitor at a U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency in Arizona. He saw adults and children forced to discard items deemed non-essential and potentially lethal. He saw that they were toothbrushes and hairbrushes and toys and rosaries and beautiful hand-embroidered cloths and Bibles inscribed with names and dates. These were essentials, some for the body, many for the soul. Kiefer was also a skilled photographer, and he asked to retrieve some of the items, and they have become a collection called Belongings, Recovering the Sacred and Objects from the Border. Through them, I imagine the power it takes to unearth a family from beloved roots. And I see the self-control to put only a backpack's worth of comfort to carry along. El Paso Bishop Mark Seitz concludes, migrants are prophetic in their lived testimony to faith, life, and family. They wake us from our indifference, opening our eyes to injustices. They are not just seeking a better life, but life itself. In today's gospel, Jesus is not using hyperbolic language. Jesus is not visioning at all. He is speaking plain truth 
So many of our brothers and sisters have had their lives uprooted, some by force, others by necessity, but always, always, they were still capable of responding to God's command to choose life. The stories we read, the places we go, the images we ponder, shape our vision of other people. People do write the vision clearly with their lives, and for us to read the vision readily, there are faulty histories, old misconceptions, and one-sided points of view that get in our way. These are the non-essential and potentially lethal items for us to discard. On the final day of my trip, I was sweltering in the heat. Montgomery and Selma had been riveting and disturbing. Now in Louisiana, at the Whitney Plantation, there was a starkness. Here there is no homage to the sugar economy. Their point of view is from the enslaved person, their history, their families, their working conditions and life and the consequences of extraordinary efforts to survive. Well, I finally found some shade, and I sat next to Ron. He's from not too far away. Ron is the great-grandson of Mary Dufresne. Mary and those she lived with were not able to rest when weary, find the shade, walk out the gate. Sitting with Ron, my boxing with God quieted down. Mary Dufresne's vision was right next to me. For the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come. The rash one has no integrity, but the just one, because of his faith, because of her faith, shall live. 